welcome to Storyboard. I'm Shubhani Gharat. Adex growth is 2 to 3x in India as compared to global markets, says Adam Gerhardt, Mindshare's global CEO, who was visiting India this week. We caught up with him and spoke to him about many things, including Mindshare's proposition of good growth, them picking up the Can Lion Media Network of the Year Award for 2023, and the changes that the media business is going through. Listen in. Adam, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thank you for having me. So very short trip to India. Tell us more about it. What is on the agenda? What is your plan for uh, the country? It is a whirlwind tour. Uh, we started with Bangalore, um, then we moved on to, to Mumbai, uh, and then Delhi, um, all within four days. Wow. So packing a lot in. We are, we're seeing growth that we haven't seen in, in years. Mm. Um, and in particular, a large part of it is coming from this market. Um, and when I look at you know, the growth rate from an ad expenditure perspective, it's two to three X this market, what it is at a global norm. Um, and when I look at that from a GDP perspective, it's virtually the same thing where globally it's kind of 2.8%. Um, and here it's three times that almost. And your visit is on the heels of uh, Mindshare winning the media <laughs> network of the year at Can Lions Festival of Creativity. Yeah. Uh, congratulations Thank on you. that. Thank Tell you. us more about it. How does it feel to win it for second time in four years? <laughs> Um, it feels immensely gratifying um, and humbling at the same time. Um, as you say, it's the second time in four years. Um, we had this year 99 short lists, 33 medals across 13 countries. Yeah. Um, and for us, it was about innovation, but also innovation with impact. Um, and we saw those two things come to the forefront, much of it because of the work that was done here in India. This year round, uh, one of the most talked about subjects at Can Line or any other advertising festival has been AI. So uh, how is it impacting your business, Adam? The application to our business then is really in a couple of different ways. From a sure. creative perspective, hmm. um, the, the ability to create multiple iterations and dynamic um, dynamically serve those is absolutely there. We're already starting to see it. It's just starting to impact the algorithms, the way in which we bid. Um, but I think the biggest area that we're focused on is um, how we leverage AI for predictive analytics, hmm. where we're entering this period where we've gone from media being about scale to then precision to permission and how we engage with consumers in an ethical and responsible way to this era of prediction. Um, and prediction is all about how we can help our clients grow by identifying new pockets of success and new ways in which they can bring either new consumers in or different, different diversified growth streams. So uh, we spoke about AI, we spoke about complexity. So how is, uh, on that note, Mindshare evolving as a media agency, as a media network? Adam? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing, you said it right there, we want to be more than a media agency. Mm. Um, clients are demanding it from us right yeah. now, where the complexity that they are facing means that they want simplification of the challenges mm. um, and they want more confidence in the decisions. Mm. Um, and we're focusing on those two areas to make it really easy to work with us and existing partners or existing teams, but also to give them confidence in the decisions that we are making on their behalf, whether it's investment decisions, whether it's outcomes and ROI decisions. Mm. Um, and it's the combination of those two that mean that we are reshaping the capabilities we have, um, the processes that we have, the way in which we partner with them, um, and everything in between. Uh, so Adam, it's been two years since you uh, launched your key focus on good growth, uh, which uh, you know I believe promotes diversified, sustainable investments that are good for business and the world. Can you uh, tell us how it has panned out so far? And can you elaborate a bit more on this focus? Yeah, I think the, the impetus behind good growth was really to reconcile the notion that there are so many different constituent groups in the ecosystem today. There's consumers, there is you know, businesses and shareholders, um, and they're not at odds. Um, at the end of the day, we need to help our clients grow, but there is a way to do it in, in a responsible manner that helps satiate everyone in the ecosystem. Sure. And we found that we can deliver growth for our clients in a multitude of ways. The way in which they define growth is what differs. Um, for some clients, they want to grow in a D2C capacity. Other clients want retail. Some want short-term sales. Some want lifetime value. 
our view is that we have to be growth architects for our clients in the future and help them on that journey. Um, and in doing so, we can deliver something that's more meaningful to consumers, but also delivers business impact mm -hmm. that is quantifiable not only today, but for the future. So Adam, you are here uh, in India for a couple of days. Uh, how do you look at uh, you know, the Indian media landscape today? Um, we're incredibly bullish on it. Um, I think if I had to sum it up, I, I would say it's a combination of opportunity and velocity. The speed and the pace at which we are seeing this market change and evolve and the dynamism of this market in particular is unlike anything we're seeing elsewhere in the world. Um, and so for us, it is how do we tap into that? How do we harness it, not just in this market, but globally as well? The same types of trends, yeah. but they are much more accelerated and it is a very different scale. If you take just something like mobile gaming, there's mm -hmm. 650 million mobile gamers. That's more than certain populations of most of the world's, uh, most of the world's countries. Um, the scale of it is unprecedented. And a combination of factors mean that the velocity of some of these changes is taking off, whether it is the, um, the, the age of the, of the population, whether it is the mobile first mentality. It means that the trends that we are seeing here are accelerating at a pace that we haven't seen otherwise. Anything that looks particularly promising to you? I, th I, I think from a mind share perspective. Yeah, I think certainly some of the trends that we're watching here and we are leaning into in particular e-commerce, no question, 19% uh, of the world's retail sales is now e-commerce. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that trend here is only taking off because of the mobile, for mobile first capacity. Um, things like influencer marketing here in India are becoming really, really advanced very quickly. Um, and so I think those sorts of trends are the ones that we're leaning into. Sure. Uh, when we set foot into 2023, the terms recession and economic hardships, mm -hmm. uh, you know, had taken center stage as, you know, seven months down the line, uh, we're catching up, Adam. Uh, has it eased out? What is it uh, globally? Uh, you know, what is uh, the impact that you're seeing across different markets? We haven't changed our forecast for the second half of this year. We're sure. still predicting predicting about 5.9% growth mm. um, for the full year. Mm. Um, but make no mistake, there is certainly a degree of, of skepticism around whether or not that will come to fruition. And there's a huge degree of volatility, mm. whether it's from supply chain issues or whether it's from war and, and tensions from a socioeconomic perspective. Um, so there, there's... Um, a high degree of us watching it incredibly closely, but we're still bullish on where we'll net out for the year. So Adam, there is also a lot of talk, uh, which I'm hearing uh, from uh, agency heads, from clients that every dollar that they are spending on advertising um, is going through a lot of scrutiny. What does it mean for you? Does it put a lot of pressure? Also, uh, you know, when so much of money is going towards digital, where measurement is also a big challenge, what is your outlook on this? There's no question the business pressure that our clients are facing has only compounded over the last sure. two years. Um, and we don't see that easing. The complexity, um, the challenges that they are facing. Um, and I think our biggest solution to that is helping them predict outcomes and and analytics hmm. far more aggressively than we ever have before, whether it's brand stature and brand health, whether it is where sales are coming from so they un know where to unlock new pockets of growth. Um, it's the biggest area that we are investing and doubling down in, which is how do we give clients confidence in where they're putting their money. And then along with Adam, we also caught up with Amin Lakhani, CEO of Mindshare South Asia, and spoke to him about Adam's goals or the goals that he has set for the India market, their expectations from the Indian festival season and much more. Listen in. We've, we've kind of now uh, crossed into the top 10 for Mindshare and his wish list is that I should take it to uh, being the number two in the next two years. And how do you do that? Uh, that's a very good question. We are, we are, we are preparing, uh, as we would like to call it, a blueprint. Uh, to kind of really take Mindshare to the next level of growth. If you can give us a sneak peek into this uh, blueprint of the Mindshare India growth and what will be the key focus areas there? So uh, clearly the focus area is uh, dialing up our play on digital transformation. Mm. Uh, when I say digital transformation, it's, uh, it's a larger subject. But within that, we've prioritized three key areas. 
One is uh, data consulting, that's the first area. The second one is e-commerce. Uh, the third one is uh, really stepping up uh, the acceleration on performance marketing. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one is, uh, you know, building center of excellence for influencer marketing. So I think these are four areas that we are clearly calling them out and, you know, focusing on where we really want to get our wins from. Okay, and uh, how does the new business pipeline uh, look like? You just uh, won the big Maruti Suzuki business, the big Maruti Suzuki pitch. If you can tell us more yeah. on that. So, uh, from a new business perspective, the year has been uh, fabulous so far. Mm. All right, uh, from the Maruti Suzuki win. Uh, uh, in addition to that, and at an overall level, I think from a mindshare group perspective, uh, we're sitting on almost 2,000 plus crores of new business that we won this year alone. Uh, so we've kind of moved the needle in that space significantly. And hopefully this, all these wins will help us uh, end the year on a high. Uh, I mean, we are just catching up ahead of the festive season. Uh, tell us uh, what are your expectations uh, from the festival this year? Very bullish on the second half of the year, uh, right? Uh, while the clients are gearing up to, to, to increase their play, in the second half of the year. The media ecosystem itself has geared up uh, with a fantastic lineup of World Cup, uh, the Asia Cup, uh, and the impact proper property calendar across all regions, uh, whether it is KBC or Shark Tank, uh, or some of the other lineup of things that we're gonna see. So, uh, quite bullish in the second half of the year, and it should help us, uh, you know, really dial up overall addicts. Uh, in the next five to six months. It is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Rob Riley, Chief Creative Officer of WPP, sharing his views on the future of creativity and why it's important to bring humor back into advertising. Whenever I had ice cream or cold 